Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hopefully you're having a wonderful day and today we are here with a video on whether or not modern soccer cards actually go up in value. A question I was sort of wondering to myself and just wanted to go ahead and make a video and share it with you guys. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like. I'd appreciate it greatly. It helps me help the channel. With that said, let's go ahead and get on into it. So we're going to start here with Messi. I'm going to go through just Messi and Ronaldo cards and based off what you see there, I think that's all we really have to go through for this episode. I was going to dig deeper but I think it will prove not to be necessary. A little bit of a spoiler there, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to primarily be looking at cards from say 2020 to 2022, cards that have been out long enough to have been able to have maybe reached a bottom and to start coming back up. Uh, typically whenever cards come out, you know, the first year or so, it's going to be a race to the bottom. And then after that, typically there's some sort of recovery or stabilization. So I feel like it's unfair to take cards from the last year or year and a half but I also want to have cards that were created during the time where soccer was booming in the hobby so 2019 and prior at least to me is sort of a separate era in regard to modern so we start with the color blast from 2021 2022 there are grades on all of these and I looked up that equivalent grade so this is a PSA 10 um, in regard to how low it is compared to its release it is now down 43% from a couple years ago to now. And over the last one year, it is down 23% as well. So no real signs of stopping there. The Prism Blue Messi to the right of that is the next one we looked up a PSA 9 since it would prove to be a little bit easier um, from release in 2022, graded in a PSA 9, this is down 31%. And over the last year, it is down 12%. Then on the bottom, we have the Kaboom from 2021 where Messi's sort of hunched over trying to hit a header. That PSA 10 from release is down 49% and over the last year is actually up 14 I didn't color coordinate that and there it is fixed so that is up 14% love to see it and then for the final card the stadium club chrome gold from release that in a PSA 10 is down 30% from release and then over the last year is down 18% so as you can see here from the first page not all too great in terms of results a lot of these are down 30 to 50% from release but over the last year you know if you average them all out maybe down 10% per card nothing crazy um, but also not a great sign, I would say. Then I wanted to look at some more random cards. The prior pager cards I felt like sort of stood out in one way or another. These also stand out in some ways, but at the same time could sort of get lost in the mix. So I wanted to go ahead and check some of these. I just found them on eBay in some recent sales. The Green Merlin Chrome PSA 10 from 2020 is down 20% over the span of its release time to now. Over the last year, there haven't been any sales. However, there was a green Mojo sale, which typically sold around the green refractor and it did not look very good, um, but I can't count that as a comp because it's not the same card, but it's the only thing I had that was close. I didn't feel it was fair, so I didn't add it. The Messi Wizards of the Pitch Red out of 10 from release is down 64%. I assumed a raw condition there on that, I think it's GBTC, some Chinese grading company that's a nine. I just assume raw on something like that of that grade. Uh, last year, also no sales data really to go off of. The Obsidian Red Flood down at the bottom left, this is a PSA 10 version from release down 13% and over the last year, not down anything. However, when I did look at RAWs for this, there was a RAW that recently sold for like 90 bucks, and RAWs, whenever these came out, were going for 700. Now you would assume the condition on a RAW closer to release is better, so that obviously is a factor, but is it 700 versus 100? I, I don't know. And then the Chrome Gold from 2021, 2022 from Topps Chrome, we have from release down 75% in a PSA 10, and over the last year, down 29% as well. So these were sort of the mixed back of just random types of cards that I wanted to go give a peek at and that didn't fare all too well either. And then third and final that I decided to go through were some messy autographs over the last few years. So we did get this 2023 Topps Chrome Messi, just, you know, one that was more recent, more relevant and wanted to go ahead and add it. From release and over the last year is basically the same thing, both of them down 18%, that also being before Messi got knocked out of the playoffs in the first round, so presumably that's not going to help the guard. Next to that, the Merlin Red Match Ball Auto out of 10. I think it's out of 10, could be out of five, but I'm gonna say out of 10. From release down 64%, and over the last year, not available as there weren't any sales of that. The Chrome PSG set from 2021, 2022 from release in a PSA 9. Almost all these have bad autos, so the auto grade doesn't really matter all that much. Barely any of them, if any, are 10s. That's down 41% from release and over the last year down 35% as well. And then finally, the Eminence patch auto from 2022 down 27% since release over the last year, not available. So that's all the messy data. And from that, it was a pretty clear cut example of 
sort of my concerns with modern and at least sort of emphasizes what I've been seeing. I just sort of see it from afar in these PWCC weekly reviews that we do together. And, you know, I check in on stuff, but I, I can't really follow it. So this was able to give me a pretty good example of what's going on, at least for Messi. Now, of course, I did want to check Ronaldo. I assume that Ronaldo would be doing just as bad, if not worse than Messi, because a lot of people are saying that Ronaldo's stuff in general is doing worse. And in certain segments, I see that. Certain other ones, I don't. But when we go and look at Ronaldo, I did two slides for him. One one, the first one being very similar to the messy first slide where it's a kaboom, a color blast, stained glass, red color match, all that good stuff. The kaboom from 2022 in a PSA 10 is up 14% from release and over 60% at the last year, which I found to be pretty shocking. Wouldn't have expected that to be honest. Uh, the Prism PSA 10 red, I think that's out of 399, is down 29% from release in a PSA 10 over the last year, actually up 17%. The Color Blast Ronaldo, that was a pretty substantial drop, down 82% from the release in a PSA 10 and over the last year down only 3%. And then the stained glass from 2021, that went down 66% in a PSA 9 grade from release and over the last year down 16%. So this one was a little bit more of a mixed bag. As you can see, the Kaboom sort of carrying the weight here in terms of uh, pricing. But even then from release, it's only up 14%. The other ones are all substantially down and would average out to somewhere around 40 to 50% in general. Over the last year though, these actually have fared really well. If you average this together, it'd be close to up 15% in total from all these. Again, the Kaboom doing a lot of the work. This one, as we'll come to see, is more of the same the immaculate out of 49 bronze from 2020 this says 2022 up here it's actually 2020 but from release down 78 percent and then over the last year down 10 percent the peacock from 2020 is down 77 percent from release and over the last year down 36 percent then we have the optic gold from 2021 out of 10 this in a psa 10 from release is down 84 percent and over the last year, we have no sales data available. And then finally, the red EPL Prism, this from 2021, down 54% from release in a PSA 10 grade. Over the last year, actually up 35%. So again, here, one where from release, you're getting absolutely killed. A lot of these, I mean, in, in this slide alone, these average out to, you know, 65, 70% down from release. Over the last year, though, again, if you look at that, Generally, these are doing fairly well, maybe staying the course, you could say. All in all, what we saw through these 20 cards was that only one of them was actually up from its pricing when it came out. So 5% of cards in total, at least from what we looked at today, have actually gone up since release. Tends to make sense, I would say, given that a lot of cards, as I mentioned before, are going to have to go through the entry cycle into the market where they come out really high because everyone's excited. And then as the 50th or 100th card comes out, people are less excited. But then as they dry up and demand starts to improve, you're going to see some run back in pricing. And so we haven't really seen that yet because we don't have that runway yet available to us. We don't know what that looks like. All that to say 5% is a bad number, um, but you could expect it to be bad, but maybe not that bad. This is pretty egregious, I would say. Something a little bit more promising is that in total over the last year, 33% of those cards did actually go up in price, which is obviously a lot more than the 5% we saw prior. Not quite the 50 or more percent you'd probably want to be at if you're looking to buy into these types of cards, but it's at least closing in on that. One thing that did surprise me was that Ronaldo actually of the cards we looked at that had available data, 60% of them were actually up over the last year while comparatively Messi only had one and that comes in at 14% overall from the data that we had. So I feel like generally their cards are doing okay at least over the last year but since release and a lot of the people that probably got into these are not going to be faring too well. So for me it's something where if you're a buyer coming into it now maybe it looks a bit more attractive than it did. But if you're someone that was coming into it over the last few years, that was an absolutely terrible time to buy. And I do worry that that same thing to an even larger extent is going to exist as we go forward into the 2022, 2023, 2024, all those years of cards that haven't yet gone through these cycles that they're going to have to go through. Uh, all that being with more cards out there to be had. So I think that that's going to make it even more difficult. And of course, in this video, I didn't mention Kylian Mbappe, Erling Haaland, Vinicius, Jude Bellingham. I could have gone into those players, but given what we were seeing right there, I don't think it would have been a worthwhile adventure. We've seen Kylian Mbappe stuff just in general fall over the last year. Erling Haaland, much the same. Maybe not some of their high end, of course. I, I'm speaking broadly a lot. I'm sure there are niches everywhere that are doing okay or maybe Maybe even thriving but generally speaking uh, Vinicius Jr. and Jude are both another example of players that had a huge year last year uh, but their prices are not even 
back to where they were before last year started. I mean, it's basically to the point where all the hype's baked in on these guys already. And as you saw just looking earlier, even GOAT cards aren't performing too well. So I really doubt that these guys would. But that's going to be it for the video. That's all the data I have for you today. As far as my opinion on the matter and what I took away from this, I feel sort of justified in my approach of staying away from modern, at least for a few years at least, to be able to sort of get a grasp on it and figure out what it is that I want to go after. I also personally wouldn't mind seeing cards reverse trend before I hop in on them. Obviously, you don't want to be, you know, buying the peak on anything, but I would like to not be trying to predict bottoms in this type of stuff because it's very hard to tell. And also, I'll add into that that I think generally... If you're truly trying to collect modern and you're being really, really safe about it, I do think it's possible. I do think you can do it. But at least from what I can tell, if you want to mitigate risk, I would wait a little bit and then hop in later, especially in this era of having so many cards and not really knowing exactly where it's all going to go. So would love to hear your thoughts down below. Let me know in a comment what you took away from this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. I'd appreciate it greatly. And if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. But with that said, hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh, peace.